let's take a look at the groove object. We have to give this the same argument as the buffer. Of course, this is whatever argument you want. You don't have to worry about the duration. That's already determined by the buffer. Uh, you want to control the level and then attach it to an easy deck. The groove is a little bit different from play. Um, it takes two kinds of information in order to play the groove object. One is a signal that determines the playback rate. This is information that's continu continuously sent to Groove. So we can send it a signal with the number one. Um, and what this does, it's quite simple. The sig tilde object takes any number and converts it to a signal. Remember the difference between, if we were to click on this, the difference between a number and a signal is that the signal is sending continuous information. Well, the message, for example, you have to press on it or bang it in order to send the number one. So right here, the signal tilde is sending the number one 44,000 times a second, or whatever your sampling rate is, and it's continuously sending that into the left inlet of Groove whenever your audio is on. Um, this controls the playback rate, as I mentioned before. If you send it a negative one, it'll play backwards. If you send it a zero, it will pause the playback. Clicking on each of these will change. Now it's sending a negative one and sending a zero. Now this by itself will not play the groove object. You actually have to send this a message indicating where do you want to play back from? So if we send the zero, it indicates, tells the groove, play buffer from zero milliseconds. So playback rate of one, a buffer of zero milliseconds. Um, let's actually record a, a longer buffer, something a little more interesting. And something, oh, I'm gonna use a guitar so you can hear a little bit more clearly when it's playing backwards. Very nice, diminished chord. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so playback rate of one, start from zero. Uh, and it cut the recording just a little bit. Now if you wanted to play it backwards, you click on negative one. And then currently again, uh, it behaves a little bit differently than the play object. So right now the groove object is stuck on the left side of this buffer. So if you were to try to play it backwards again and you click on this, nothing would happen. It's saying, basically telling it start from zero and play backwards, which wouldn't actually mean, it wouldn't play anything, of course. So you'd want to tell it start at the end and play backwards. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, whenever you're in doubt, of course, click on the help file uh, and this explains everything that you need to know. Start playback at zero milliseconds. And then this is forward at normal speed, reverse, and then pause. Um, now let's look at some of the more uh, interesting functionality of the groove ob object. So we can actually, this is mostly used for looping. Um, and we can send this a message. Remember the dollar sign one is just a variable. When we click on this toggle, this will create a message that says loop one which turns looping on. When this is off, it turns looping uh, off. So if you were to turn looping on, play at regular speed from zero, it'll loop the whole six second buffer continuously over and over. We can loop it backwards. We can loop it at a different speed altogether. Again, the playback rate affects the pitch, uh, just like the speed control with the playlist object.
So you can see how this could be a really, really versatile tool. Anyway, stop the loop and or pause the playback. Uh, now, if we wanted to not loop the entire thing, if you wanted to only loop a section of your groove, of your uh, buffer, uh, these two inlets are going to uh, allow you to control the minimum point of the loop, or the beginning of the loop, and the end of the loop. So if we send this two integers, let's say you want to just loop um, the last three seconds of your buffer, give this 3,000 to 6,000. Again, this is a six second buffer, so when we play from the when we hit this, it's going to play from the beginning, and then it'll loop the last three seconds. And these can be changed in real time, of course. This is not a, I'll pause it, this is not a terribly useful way of manipulating this buffer. You don't really know, uh, it takes a lot of trial and error. So we're gonna be using uh, another object called the waveform object, waveform tilde. Um, this allows you to visualize the recording just like you see right here. And you'll see in a second, we'll be able to interact with it um, in some interesting ways. So the waveform, uh, let me just double check my notes here. I always forget what the messages are. You want to send it a set and the same argument as your buffer. When you click on that, you can see very, very clearly, again, the waveform of whatever it is that you recorded. Um, and most importantly, we want to send it a. Um, Oh, I always forget what message it is. Let's take a look. Uh, set mode. So you want to send a set mode message. And there are, we can of course do a variable. There are a couple different modes. I'm going to keep them separate right now so that we can clearly understand how they work. Um, set mode zero one and two these are a couple different ways of interacting with the waveform object so set mode zero means no mouse clicks do nothing so no interaction with mouse that's the sort of default mode of the waveform object i can hover over this click on it nothing happens set mode one if i were to click on this and hover over you see now you have a little selector um, thing on your mouse this allows you to select a portion of the waveform and you can shift and click to edit selection so we clicked on select mode one I can click and select this, just this portion and then if I were to shift click near the left it allows you to adjust the start point or the end point of your um, of your selection now set mode two allows you to move this and if you click and drag up and down it allows you to adjust size of selection so I'm clicking and dragging left and right and if I drag down it shrinks it around the center point if I drag up it expands it um, these seem really simple if I go back to set mode 0 I guess you can't set mode 1 um, set mode 2. So this seems simple, but it's going to be really important for the way that we interact with the groove object. So as I mentioned, this is the beginning and the end point of your loop. These two outlets also correspond to this is the end and this is the beginning of your selection. So if you were to just take a look at um, right here, Let's say the beginning of the little phrase is at 890 milliseconds and then 3,700. So if we were to set these as your loop points, 
you now have a really intuitive um, way of interfacing with the uh, with the groove object. <laughs> play around with it. Uh, now, if we were to click on the zero, it would begin from the beginning, and then once it reaches your loop points, it, it loops that section. Oh, of course, I forgot to turn loop on, so let's try that again. And I turn loop off, and then it finishes playing. So if you wanted to only um, start from the loop, you'd send it a start loop message. And this allows you to target and tell it to just play. Of course, loop has to be on. And we haven't even begun playing with the playback rate at all. also automate how these things are selected so this indicates your selection start and end point um, you can have for example a cycle 0.05 scale that between the value of the cycle object and let's say between uh, 900 milliseconds and um, 4,000 milliseconds. Snapshot. And now the starting point of our loop will just continuously change. It's being controlled by this cycle object. So of course adjust the uh, end point either with a different um, with a different cycle object or just say um, let's say we only want we wanted the same effect of a loop that's moving back and forth across a buffer and you wanted it to be 500 milliseconds long you'd only need to add 500 to this and then your end point will always be 500 milliseconds ahead of your start point. Uh, and then this of course can be adjusted however you like. There's just way too much fun you could have with this. Have another one of these controlling your playback rate. We'll scale it between 0.3. Nice. 
so of course whether you're doing a little bit of automation or interacting with it with a mouse with a mouse save button uh, with any of the other objects that we've looked at in in Mac so far uh, you can see how this is an incredibly versatile uh, set of tools uh, just to, again to to reiterate the buffer requires a name and a duration uh, this name needs to be a unique name and all this is doing is keeping a little spot of memory available for all these other manipulations that you wish to do uh, record tilde with the same argument allows you to record into that buffer play tilde allows you to play through it either simply with the toggle object or with a little bit more customizable uh, you know with a line tilde with any sort of signal uh, and then the groove tilde especially coupled with a waveform tilde object allows you to do much more complex looping and adjusting the playback rate um, this behaves very similar to the uh, playlist object in the sense that we can also turn time stretch uh, that's a, an object I need a message we can turn time stretch on and off um, at the moment as you can hear um, the playback rate also affects the pitch If time stretch is on, you'll get time stretching, allowing you to adjust the playback rate without affecting the pitch. Uh, and if time stretch is on, then you have an additional variable that you can play with, which is pitch shift. This should be review for everybody. Um, but when time stretch is on, you can shift control the pitch and the playback rate independently. Now you might be asking why is this any different than the playlist object? Well, this allows you to record in real time. Uh, with the playlist object you'd have to record into a digital audio workstation, a different program, uh, export it, load it into Max, and then manipulate it. Right here um, you will be able to automate you can have this hooked up to a key object when you hit a certain key it automatically records um, then hit another key and it plays back at a certain rate uh, you can play around uh, attaching a MIDI controller to this for example so you can already see it's a, an incredibly powerful uh, powerful way of recording and ma manipulating sound live in real time um, so have fun with this there are some really really good tutorials on YouTube uh, this is one of the more popular features of Max, and I would encourage you to dig dig deep if this is something that interests you. Let me know if you have any questions, and enjoy.